the patriarch Abraham, a place where Abraham took his wife and his son by the order of Almighty God and settled them there in a desolate valley. And after some time, Abraham returned back to that desolate valley where he was ordered by God to leave his wife and son. And there in that desolate valley, Abraham built a building which is called the Kaaba. Kaaba in Arabic means cube. Kaaba means cube because it was a square shaped building, a very simple building, a building maybe 18 feet, 20 feet high, and maybe 18 feet or 20 feet on each side, a simple building, not a building that God lives in, nor a sacred building itself, but something made of mud and stones, but a building that was ordered by Almighty God for Abraham to build and then go around it commemorating God. Not worshiping the building, but worshiping God, but setting up that building so that human beings would come from all over the earth and do what? Circumambulate around that building and praise Almighty God and call upon him with forgiveness and mercy and repeat the oneness and the glory of Almighty God. This Kaaba, all Muslims repeating this tradition of Abraham, reliving this tradition of Abraham, Every Muslim from wherever they are, China or Russia or Africa or America or Australia or from South America or wherever Muslims are, they have been ordered once in their lives, if they are able to do so, to go to Mecca and to experience the universal fraternity and to experience the tradition of Abraham. These are the five pillars of Islam. And Islam is built upon these five pillars. And each of these five pillars form the basis for the Muslim discipline, the Muslim ideology, the Muslim's relationship with Almighty God, and the disciplines that begin to shape and form the spiritual structure of the human being. Included in our faith system is the belief in angels. We believe in angels. We believe that the angel Gabriel came to all the prophets of Almighty God, and that is the archangel of God. We believe that. We believe in all the divine scriptures. We believe that Almighty God. We believe that God would create human beings and that he would not leave human beings without inspiration, Guidance, a manual, no more so than any one of you would set up a company and create some machinery and people that work on that machinery and then market that machinery and not send along with that machinery a manual. And not also make available to those that purchase that machinery a technician. No one would buy an automobile or a toaster, a computer or a telephone without asking for a manual or having some kind of a service number to call a technician or a warranty. Everyone would ask for it and everyone would expect it. And we think that the creator of the heavens and earth, who is the designer of everything and has created man as the ruler of this planet, the most sophisticated creature on this planet would not communicate with man through man and give to him a manual by which to follow and send along with that manual prophets and messengers to act as technicians to explain to man that manual and the relationship of the one who sent. So we believe in divine scripture. We believe in all the prophets and messengers as extraordinary human beings sent by God. We believe in the day of judgment. We do believe, certainly, that life is very short. 
60 years, 70 years, 100 years, or even in the case of Noah, 950 years, there's no doubt that human beings will die. Every single one of them will die. And if there's anyone here that's outside of that reality, they certainly have no need to hear this lecture because they're more exceptional. They're of a different species than we are. And since we know that we will die and we know that we came into life and we know that we were created and this life was designed and that this life is restricted and that this life has a purpose that there is some accountability for this living. Four, how would any one of you not think that there was accountability for life, but think there is accountability in your workplace? You have a supervisor, there's accountability there. You have children, and they are accountable. Teachers have students, and they are accountable. So there is accountability in every area of life. How then would we think as human beings that we would be created and live and given the gift of choice, volition, and there would be no accountability? There is accountability. That accountability according to scripture is that the creator of life and death has the ability to bring the human beings back to judgment even after their dust and bones. Now, those of you who are intelligent, sophisticated, who would think that to be an impossibility or just some kind of a theory, well, I call your attention to take a look at the earth. From time to time, the seasons change. And you see the earth, one time, is full of life, blossoms, fruits, greenery, then the Season change, and the earth is barren, bearing no fruit at all for some time. And then rain comes from the sky, and the earth is energized, brought back to life with new fruits and new grass and a new season. Is not the one who created the heavens and the earth who is able to do that? Is not the one that created the human beings from the very beginning able to do that? Is, the, is not the one who created everything from water able to bring that water, that human being, or that earth back to life after it was dead? We say yes, definitely. The one who is the creator of the beginning has the ability to create howsoever he pleases. We believe that Almighty God and only Almighty God has the decree. To do whatsoever he pleases and gives to human beings a small amount of decree. That is, you and I, we do have the choice to accept or to reject. We even have the choice to take our own lives. It is not our right, but it is our choice. We have the choice to earn our living in a dignified way, or we have our choice to earn our living in an immoral way. We have a choice between right and wrong. We have a choice to be decent, dignified, and honest, or we have the choice to be criminals. But the choices that we have, so many that they are, they are limited definitely limited. They're limited in time. They're limited in scope. They're limited in number. Why? Because the human being is not a creature that is born with unlimited anything. And finally, we believe, as the Quran sets forward for us, that inevitably, man has been created and put on this earth only for a test, a determination, to give him or her the opportunity to perform, to display, to obey, 
to acknowledge, to submit, to pass a test. And after some time, you will be taken out of this earth, you will be judged, and then you will be given a new life in a different place according to the actions that you did. Now we understand this in earthly terms. We understand that criminals, when they are indicted and convicted, we understand and we accept that criminals are placed in jails. We understand that an, a human being, if they are diagnosed with some disease, we place them in a hospital. Once they are diagnosed, they're put there for treatment. We understand that. We understand also that we go to school to graduate and that we work to get paid. We also understand that we are all striving for happiness. Ultimately, every human being wants happiness. Almighty God said, ultimately, happiness is not on the earth. You will not achieve ultimate happiness on the earth in the same way that a murderer, a mass murderer, will not receive ultimate punishment on the earth by his fellow human beings. Cannot. There's another ultimate punishment and there's an ultimate reward. The ultimate punishment is hellfire. God is enough to create a hellfire just like God is enough to create a paradise. And if you can examine the depths of the heavens that we have not seen, but you know it is there, then you can imagine that if God said there's a hellfire and that there's a paradise, if God said that's what it is and that's where the ultimate rewards will be given and the ultimate punishments will be given, we believe. And we believe upon God, not we don't believe upon what we say. We believe upon God and we believe upon that because all the prophets and messengers who came from God, they said that. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm sure that many of you, in your preconditioned understanding of what Islam is, many of you have heard or you've been told that Muslims are terrorists. Muslims are fanatics. Muslims are heretics. Muslims are extremists. Muslims are murderers. Muslims are hostage takers. This is what you've been told. And I'll tell you that in some cases, that is true. There have been certainly some Muslims not just recently, but even before newspapers and the media came about, there have been some Muslims who were the meaner element of the Muslims who have done those kinds of things, so, sure, certainly. But then let's be objective. Let us go to history and be objective. Have not Jews and Christians also done those things? And are they not also doing those things? Yes, they are. A criminal is a criminal. A sinner is a sinner. But you would never see in the media a Christian pedophile. You would never see a pedophile called a Christian pedophile. You would never see a murderer called a Christian murderer or a Jewish